Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Terry Carter. I'm a professional geoscientist in Ontario, and uh, ben, ben will introduce himself. He'll take over halfway through. Uh, Jug sends his regrets. He's unable to make it. So this is just an update on salt cavern storage of hydrocarbons in uh, southern Ontario. And this is just the uh, format of the presentation. So we'll start with a summary, an overview of storage, geological setting and opportunities, something about the what we store and the regulatory framework and some trends. And there'll be some conclusions. So that's just the structure of the talk. There are 71 storage caverns that are storing hydrocarbons in Southern Ontario. These are caverns constructed embedded salt formations. And it's just not dealing with uh, reservoir storage of natural gas. There's storage capacity of 3.4 million cubic meters or 22 million barrels if you prefer those units. All storage is embedded salt formations. Most of the caverns were constructed before 1980 and the last new construction was in 1992. So obviously there hasn't been a new development in this industry and there's a couple of reasons for that. One of those main issues, the growth, we think, is limited due to issue with management of brine. So if you construct a new cavern, you're going to kind of, you're, you're dissolving salt, you'll end up with a brine, you got nowhere to take it. Uh, the regulatory environment uh, is uh, not conducive to um, an easy route to dispose of those brines. There's opportunities for more uh, storage caverns in Ontario if you could deal with those regulatory issues. This slide shows the uh, location of Ontario caverns. This is in the uh, southern southwest corner of southern Ontario. You see the Windsor area and the inset is for Sarnia. There's 105 wells, 71 caverns. They're storing propane, butane, ethylene, and oil. So hydrocarbons are either liquids or liquid when stored at depth where the pressures are higher. It's just a picture of an intermediate storage facility. You know what Chug means by this, a facility that is storing hydrocarbons but does not have an associated petrochemical plant or a refinery, like this operation. Uh, so there's solution mine caverns here storing petrochemical products underground right at the petrochemical plant. There's a picture from Windsor's uh, storage facility at Windsor's, a dual entry cavern. This means there's two wells servicing the same cavern, and one of those wells will be used for injection or withdrawal of brine, which is used for displacement of the hydrocarbons. The other well will inject and, and withdraw hydrocarbons. Just another overview slide, the depths of these caverns range from 300 to 720 meters. The salt thickness is up to 90 meters and the basalt, which is the primary formation used for storage in Southern Ontario. There's lots of cap rock, permeable cap rock above these formations. Temperature at that depth, it's room temperature, 16 to 20 degrees centigrade. Capacities of individual caverns run from 315,000 barrels up to one and a half million. Pressure gradient is about 0 0.7 PSI per foot. Product pressures range from 500 PSIG to 1100. A lot of Southern Ontario is underlain by salt. This map shows the distribution of the B salt in the subsurface. So there's no salt exposed at the surface. Obviously it dissolves away when exposure to fresh water. There's two lines on this map. One that extends further east is the depositionally interpreted depositional extent of the salt. And that salt's been dissolved back after deposition to that darker line in the infield area to the west. This is the B salt. This map is the bedrock geology of Southern Ontario. Ontario is covered by Paleozoic sedimentary rocks. And that's why we have salt here. Salt was deposited in this salty inland sea that occupied Ontario about 400 million years ago. Let's see, this next slide here shows the layers or stratigraphy of those rocks that we see in that previous slide. The highlighted area on this slide is highlighting a red box is the Salina group. And there's several formations in the Salina group that have bedded salt, which is shown in this slide. 
Uh, all the salt bearing formations are shown in red on here. The most extensive of the salt formations is the B salt, and that's the one that's usually used for hydrocarbon storage in solution mine caverns. But there's also some cavern storage operations in the A2 salt or A2 evaporite, we call it on here. There's also underground mining of salt. Uh, the F salt at Windsor, although they're phasing that out and they've uh, on a ramp down to the B salt, so they'll continue underground mining in the B salt. And there's underground mining of the A2 salt at Godridge. Now, Ben tells me that he will take over this part, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Terry. Uh, my name's Ben Barnes, uh, Double B Well Services. I look after the servicing and testing of uh, five of those seven facilities that uh, were mentioned there previously. Uh, works out over about two-thirds of the storage wells in Ontario. The storage caverns are regulated by the CSA Z341. We fall back to those standards. It's a technical standards developed by a group of operators, regulators, consultants, and the public focused on safety. There's a new supplement out for hydrogen storage as we move into the energy transition. Uh, ZED 341 was adopted into the provincial standards under the Oil and Gas Salt Resources Act. Uh, prior to the CSA, there was a refiner's uh, cavern operators group in Ontario. Uh, they realized the immense value of these underground storage uh, caverns. Uh, the volume stored in those is immensely greater than what could be stored in surface tanks and vessels. The well for a storage cavern starts out much like any other oil and gas well. Your surface intermediate production casings. Uh, once the final string cemented into the top of the salt layer, the well is drilled open hole and then washed out uh, with fresh water. That fresh water dissolves the salt, producing brine, which uh, we've already mentioned before is kind of an issue to dispose of now. The instrumentation more akin to the safety systems of a storage cavern. They include pressure, flow, temperature, transmitters, and they are all linked to central control room that operate the emergency shutdown valves. If there's a high pressure, the system shuts down. If there's a low pressure, the system shuts down. If there's density changes, the system shuts down. Uh, the caverns, they're large, uh, underground, contain pressurized storage. If there were any kind of an issue at the surface, it would be a catastrophic event. There are many, many safety systems redundantly on top of each other to prevent that, keep these operating safely. Another safety requirement is the MIT portion. The MIT is a mechanical integrity test. Uh, every five years, by regulation, we have to test the cavern, uh, the casings, and the, the connection of the wellbore to the salt formation with nitrogen to ensure a seal that nothing's leaking away. Every 10 years, we go into them and do a major workover that includes inspection logs, uh, the casing, sonar, the, the cavern shape. The case inspection log is similar to a pipeline pig. It checks for any corrosion, leak paths, uh, pitting and that in the casing to uh, verify integrity. From the findings of the, the MITs, we can uh, continue operation of the cavern safely. Ontario is one of the first, it was the first province to conduct nitrogen brine interface testing on caverns. Uh, Jug was instrumental in the one, some of the first cavern testing at the one of the facilities that he was the engineer at. Uh, so they kind of brought that process up here to for, to try and determine where a leak was. And through that testing, they moved into the regular testing of these caverns with nitrogen. The nitrogen that we use as a test medium, it is a smaller molecule than what any of the product is. So it will find a leak path well before any of the product well. Uh, a lot of the wells that we operate, they're 40 to 50 years old, 60 years old, and uh, they're showing their age with cor uh, corrosion in that in the, the initial casings and completions of them. 
from that, we keep them up into proper operating standards and safe casings and uh, valve in that with the, the regular testing and uh, workovers on these wells. A couple of pictures here of some of the work that I've completed. Uh, the one on the left we just finished on Monday and center and right there was a, not what you want to see for MIT logs. Usually you'd like to see two log overlays, not, I think there's 18 there by the end of that job. We were chasing down a very small leak, and from that we had to bring in that big drilling rig on the right and uh, completely chew out 580 meters of 7-inch casing and cement a new liner in place. Uh, that well is probably, I think, the oldest operating cavern. There would be an Ontario drilled originally in the 50s, and we put it back into service, and no reason why it can't carry on for another 50, 60 years. The amount of storage wells it's kind of plateaued. Uh, the reason for that is development of new ones and disposal of the brine. Most wells have been in Ontario developed before the 80s. Total number of caverns has been reduced. There has been the odd one where it, it isn't in, hasn't showed integrity and we've had to take it out of service. Uh, we have kept the other ones in place by installing complete new well heads, replacing them, new casing liners, uh, all kinds of remediation. Uh, the one new storage was the compressed air energy storage brought online in 2019. Why isn't there new development? We have a large proven suitable geology for that. Main issue is economic case for more storage. The refineries are operating at sort of their capacity with the wells they have. And uh, we can't get rid of the brine to dis when we go to wash new ones. The Detroit River Zone is what was used for disposal of the brine. Uh, we no longer use that along the river. It's uh, regulated by the Ministry of Natural Resources, where the brine disposal falls under the Ministry of Environment. Uh, seems the two different ministries don't work well together to get us to a, uh, a suitable disposal situation. Um, there's other opportunities for hydrocarbon storage in storage caverns. Other or jurisdictions have natural gas storage in caverns. We don't have any in Ontario, all just uh, reservoir storage of gas. Uh, the compressed air energy storage, uh, one project been operating for four years, uh, that's kind of proved its feasibility and its efficiency will in increase over time as new techn technologies come online. Uh, the caverns developed were for hydrocarbons, uh, has been tried in other and used in other areas. They've been converting these to or drilled specifically for hydrogen. I uh, feel that the caverns in Ontario, they can be uh, converted or new, new ones completed for the transition to the hydrogen economy. There's huge potential for that, either in the existing areas. There's lots of salt in Ontario, lots of proximity close to the production and the markets for the The obstacles that keep coming up is that brine disposal. That is our, our main problem here. Uh, other jurisdictions do allow that, so why can't we? There is a huge financial risk to move that into the next steps. Uh, you'd have to go through a large uh, studies and at the end of that you might not even get the approval to pursue it any further. The recap, all the storage in Ontario is in bedded salt. A large amount of bedded salts are suitable for cavern development. We have new regulations for the compressed air energy storage and they're in the process for that for the hydrogen storage. They're old caverns, but we've kept them in tip-top operating shape with all of our inspections, workovers, work that we do on these regularly. Their summary there, the cavern storage has supported the petrochemical industry, uh, refining industries for almost 70 years in Ontario, almost as long as oil production has been happening just in Alberta itself. Uh, there's no reason why we can't continue on with the energy transition, the green energy storage for the the next foreseeable future as it is. Yeah. Do, uh, I guess, questions at the end of this? We'll turn that over. Thank you.